All right, so let's talk about the magnetic field not around one wire, but around multiple wires. Something to write. Magnetic field around multiple wires. So if we have a, a magnetic field around multiple pathways, let's talk about a bunch of wires that go out of the page or towards you. You know that if they're coming towards you, these are dots in the center of circles, then the magnetic field would be obeying a right-hand rule. It means that the, the magnetic field should be going counterclockwise around each of these guys. Now the thing is, if we have magnets near each other, we've talked about before the fact that the magnetic fields really contour together. We've talked about that with bar magnets. And as it turns out, magnetic field intensities, the contours, uh, contour together for these conductors as well. So you get this kind of neat wavy magnetic field thing happening all around this set of conductors. Now that's for a row of conductors coming out of the page and you see that the magnetic field is sort of zigzagging around around counterclockwise, roughly counterclockwise around those conductors. Yep. Oh, the numerical or result for the previous? 4.5 or, yeah, 4.5 times 10 to the negative 5 Tesla. Now if I take three, uh, four more conductors and I make them go into the page, what do you suppose is going to happen? Oh my gosh, it's going to be the same thing. Same thing, but the other direction, right? Other direction. And would you believe if I were to look at this not so close up like I've done here, but to zoom out a little bit on each of these scenarios, I could say, hey, look, at a further distance out, it'll be roughly the same again, but maybe not as strong. Would you believe that? A little further out over here, maybe not as strong. But what about a little further out yet? And you don't have to draw the next one, but a little further out yet. Yeah, maybe it'll, it'll roughly be sort of an elliptical outline. I'm drawing over my title, but I don't care. What happens if I have a bunch of wires going out of the page over here, and in a nearby na neighborhood spatially, I've got a bunch of wires coming into the page. What happens to the magnetic field halfway in between? It's going in the same direction. It's going in the same direction. but. In this region here, have we built up a fairly strong magnetic field? Yeah, looks like we've, we've built up a fairly strong magnetic field, all oriented in the same way. That's kind of nice. Might be useful to do such a thing. What if, I, what if this blue rectangle I just drew represents a block of soft iron? Could I get all the domains inside that soft iron to align? Could I make a permanent magnet? Sure, why not? In fact, we could make ourselves a little bar magnet by having a row of wires going one way and a row of wires going the opposite way, right side by side with this thing. What if I wanted to take it one step further? I don't want to just get like four wires and point them one way and four wires and point them another way and run current through them in opposite directions. What I would like to do, be a little more intelligent about this. I'd like to say, I want to do a coil. I want to do a coil and the coil is going to look like this. And you don't have to be terribly artistic to draw this. It's kind of like a snaky snake. That is artistic. Okay. Trying to make it nice and simple. That's impossible. I've got a, a coil. I'm going to draw the simpler version yet in a second. I've got this coil so that the current goes along the coil like this, and on the, can you see that if it coils away from me, there's going to be current going this way as it coils away from me? And as it comes back into the foreground, it's going to be coming this way. And as it goes away from me, and comes towards me, away from me, towards me, away from me, can you see what's happening there? See the comparison I'm making? On one side it's going away from me, and on one side it's coming towards me. 
what happens around all these little x's is the same as what's happening over here. You've got the magnetic field orienting this way. Exactly the same as what we said before. And around these little dots, I've got the magnetic field orienting this way. Exactly what we said before. And in the middle, you've got a really strong magnetic field. Agreed? It's the same process. Only this time, rather than just randomly getting a bunch of wires and lying them side by side, I coiled them, but I achieved the same outcome. Okay, so we've got a fairly strong magnetic field inside of this thing. And really, if you take a look at any coil, any coil like this, and I flow current through this coil so that it's receding from me on one side, and it's coming into the foreground on the other side, and that's how I'm going to illustrate it, then I can use this idea, and we said this before, to create a right-hand rule, where if it's going into the page on the right and reaching around and coming out of the page on the left, you notice that I would have my thumb pointing in one direction, and my thumb points in a direction that orients with the magnetic field coming out of that end of the coils. Okay, so I wanted to approach this one more time to talk about this right-hand rule. Hopefully we've got it on, on paper in a way that's easily visualizable, and even we've tried to use the X notation and the dot notation to show what direction the current is going in this wire as the current recedes from us on one side of the coil and comes towards us on the other side of the coil. And it's kind of analogous to the idea of a north and south pole on a magnet. Permanent magnet, that is. <coughs> this is an electromagnet with an induced magnetic field around a current carrying wire. Now, if we want to talk about the intensity of the field around that, uh, the maximum intensity of the ma magnetic field around that current carrying wire, around this solenoid, this coil, uh, what's been noticed is that the magnetic field intensity is proportional to the number of coils there are per meter of solenoid. So the, the, they might call it the coil density, the number of loops that you have in a, in a loop, in a solenoid, per meter that the solenoid is. It's the, the number of loops per length. And that makes sense. If you have a lot of coils in an electromagnet, you'd think that it would be stronger. And if you have only a few, it's probably a weaker one. If you've ever played with electromagnets, you'd have some sense of that. Um, the other proportionality is, well, what else could I do, do you think, to increase the magnetic field around this thing? Put it close together so we could talk about diameter. That's, that's another one. It doesn't happen to be one of the variables that I'm looking for, but you're right. Maybe that would strengthen it. What's another one that I could do? Think like electricity. We're trying to change the yeah, we could change the current. Sure sort of what, what are N and L? N is the number of coils yeah. per length. Okay, so if you have a lot of coils in a shorter electromagnet, it'll be a uh, st stronger, uh, stronger magnetic field within. Mm -hmm. Now, is that like the total wire use or length of? Length, length that's length being length measured length. like from here to here. From the start to the end of the solenoid. Now, you, if we put these proportionalities together and experimentally make some measurements, dividing right side by left side as usual, we end up getting a really nice relationship where magnetic field is equal to mu naught, the same mu naught that we've discussed pre previously, the magnetic permeability of, of free space, or the ability of free space to allow a magnetic field to permeate into it, um, times the number of loops times the amount of current flowing through the wire divided by the length of the solenoid from end to end. So where would the diameter factor in? Well, the diam diameter uh, would, would factor in, well, hmm. No, that's it's a good question. You're right, you're right, that's a good thought. These fields are stronger, closer to... Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm going to have to take a think about that, how we would fit in radius into that one. Okay.